All right, man. So let's get on with the first question, yeah? Let's go. So um, <laughs> first question. Yeah. I believe you had some issues with your cancer. Yeah. Um, obviously, when you were a young man. Um, and if you don't mind um, sort of talking about that journey and everything. Um, and basically, how did you <coughs> overcome any certain obstacles that were sort of put in your way because of that uh, disease? Um, and uh, did you... Did it help you grow a certain mindset towards your um, sort of health and fitness mm. before the treatment and after the treatment and then continuing? Because I know that you ran um, a marathon as well, didn't you? You trained for a marathon yeah. after that period of time. Um, you uh, was it? It was the Great North Run or no, it was Manchester like London Marathon, mate. London, yeah. Was it London Marathon? Yeah, it been nine oh, months wow. of finishing chemotherapy. That was yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. could you sort of create like a like a, a picture of that like you know how did it start and what did you feel like and going from there and sort of relating it back to how you came out of that and then got to the point where you did run the London Marathon yeah so how it all sort of started really is um so how the whole cancer come about I started feeling ill for about a year um previously to getting diagnosed yeah um I kept going to and from the doctors saying to them look I feel ill like something got right with me yeah. And they said to me, pretty much kept telling me to go away, mate, saying that you're a high contract, yeah. back again. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, look, I just, I, I just kept going, saying it's wrong with me, you know, it's throwing antibiotics at me, yeah. saying, oh, it's a cold, it might be a viral infection or something like that, a virus is going around. Yeah. And I uh, kept going again for a year. And then I finally found like, a, like I kept getting these really bad headaches, mate, really, really bad headaches. And I started having night sweats. Wow. Um. And then where, where I'm a tree surgeon, that's what I do as a trade, um, I found like a little lump underneath my armpit. Yeah. And as I was using a chainsaw, it started getting gradually bigger. I right. thought, blimey. So I went back to the doctors again. I said, look, this is this is what I found. Yeah. I found a lump there. They looked at it and said, oh, I get it. It's, it's your lymph nodes. It's swollen up because you're not feeling well. Yeah. Um, go away, come back in a month. If it's not got better, we'll, we'll have a look at it. Mm. So this is a year down the line, mate. Bloody hell. So having cancer that whole time. Yeah. Um, and anyway, cut a long story short with that. Ended up being stage three advanced uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a blood cancer. Yeah. Um, which is it's a cancer of the lymph node. So it's uh, yeah, it was it was just before it went into my organs actually. So, wow. Jesus. So, so just before stage four. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, that started started treatment there. So once I, I went for a uh, ultrasound when they finally started like taking notice. Yeah. Went for that ultrasound and um, and they looked at the ultrasound and they went blimey, they went, mate, you got to go to the doctors today mm. right and we'll order a biopsy uh get a biopsy sorted out sorry and also a pet scan so i went for the biopsy within a couple of days and then from there i had a pet scan so i was awaiting the biopsy results but the pet scan just went bang yeah and then they went right okay this is this is what it is yeah um so we started treatment within a week after that pet scan so the doctors it it weren't great to be fair do you know what i mean because we're young i was young at the time they said oh he's too young you're too young as yeah. soon as he got into the hospital's hands, they were brilliant, mate. Couldn't fault him. One bit. How did you feel with the, you know, not not to go too too far down into into like treatment and stuff, but because they had missed it obviously for quite a long time, and they hadn't really done due diligence towards kind of at least getting a second opinion, taking you to that next stage where you need to sort of be examined, scanned. There could be a possibility. But mm. there's um, something there more than just what antibiotic, you know, what what good are antibiotic sort of thing. Yeah. How did you feel at that time? It's easily missed, or did you feel that you were a little bit sort of could have had a little bit more attention put your way, or do you think it was just the pure fact that you're a nice, healthy young man, you know, that seems okay, but yeah. you're just complaining, but you're ill, you know, you're unwell. Do you think there was a, a, a sort of a yeah. misunderstanding? I think what it, I think, yeah, like the, the build up to it, totally get it, right? So, yeah, it might just be all this and that, this and that. So, for the years sort of leading up to it, they're never going to think, oh, it's, it's going to be cancer. Yeah. But I think at the point where it got to the, where I found the uh, lump underneath my armpit, that's when it should have been questions raised, you know what I mean? Quicker. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think so. Yeah, it is what it is. It's It, it was what it was. I'm still here now. Yeah, so, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, it was, that was, I did feel. At the time, I weren't feeling that actually. It was only probably years after where I thought actually they could have because I've lost three met like three friends now. 
due really? to that same mistake. And um, did you meet them through that, through, yeah. Did you meet them through, yeah. you know, through that journey? Yeah. So as, when we, when we all got diagnosed, it was all, I, was, I was 24 at the time. Yeah. And there's a charity called Click Sergeant, which I've worked closely with, who I run the, uh, the London Marathon for. Mm. And we sort of created the first group in Great Britain. Really? Um, that connected as, as a whole group. So when you're going through treatment, um, we've all sort of we all sort of formed our friendship groups. So rather than us all going through it on our own, we created like a like a group. We were yeah. all going through it at the same time. You wow. see? So and and that group was was a very very strong group. And that, and that is the best one. So it, was the, it was the original one and the best one that's never has ever been. Really through through that charity. Yeah. And how um, do you how does that group stay alive? Does it is it online? Is it like uh, is it meetings or? Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, meet, no. meeting up. Uh, yeah, so well, three of them sadly passed away now. Mm. Uh, at a funeral last Monday, actually. Really? Uh, yeah, three of my niece. Sorry to hear that. That's right, but it's yeah, right. No, it's, it's, it's hard. But it's a realization of what you've, yeah, what you've got. Yes, mate. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you've you've got a life. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Uh, it's so precious, isn't it? It's like really fragile. Yeah. Um, just amazing that you know it happens to people who are so young because. You're kind of almost even I would be fooled because you're sort of really healthy guy in great shape now. You know, you've been looking after your diet, and, you <laughs> and, <Double> rip, mate. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> and um, check out his Instagram. Um, but yeah, no, I just think that yeah, it's it's yeah. you don't think about it, do you? And, you, so, and why would you at like how old were you when you were diagnosed? I was 24. So yeah, really yeah. young. You wouldn't think it was that, would you? Just think sure. like, what's wrong with me? You don't know, like I've got some sort of yeah nasty infection or something like that, or something that's just not being cured properly. Yeah, it's easily done, mate. And I understand that. I do understand that. Um, so what was the um, the journey, the next step for you when you then? What was the next step for you when you decided to run a marathon, train for a marathon? So the next step was I was going through my treatment, right, and I thought. There's no way I'm going to let this kill me, right? No mm. way. And they said to me, and two other lads that are having a chemotherapy, same cancer at the same time as me, yeah. all right next to each other in, in the suite. And uh, they said to us, your fitness is going to be ruined for like the next two years, so mm. to speak, yeah? And theirs was, but mine wasn't. So, because mm. I had in my head, I said, there's no way he's going to, I said, this ain't going to kill me. Yeah. I said, because if it does, it's going to ruin my mum's life. And I said, I'm not having that. Mm. So anyway, I spent five days in bed after chemo, right? Mm. I'll, I'll be getting drip fed water without realising it. Mum keeping me alive, I'll just be comatose, right? That's what it did to me. Mm. And then um, after that, I'll spring back to life, go bang. But wow, I thought, right, let's go to the gym, mum. Yeah. And we, we went to the gym at the Mica. In Mersey. Really? Yeah. Just walked in there, mate. The you know, old Mica. I, yeah. I, I don't know where, put my old little farm's cap on, bub. Yeah. <laughs> so I did the dumb bell go. <laughs> I just went in there, just put a mindset, and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to run a marathon within nine months of beating this. Yeah. Right. And I had it in my head. I've applied for the applied for the marathon. It was, was already the age for this charity. So I'm gonna run it for you. Raise the money for you. Yeah. For what like a great thing they've done for us. Yeah. And what they're still doing actively for people around the world, around the country. Sorry. Yeah. Um. And anyway, so I thought we did that. Went out to Thailand uh, straight away after I finished my chemo. So I still only start getting my curly hair back at the time. It's curly. Yeah. And uh, and then I started training with professional athletes, professional fighters. And I was smashing them in the fitness test, mate. Really? Fitness test, 40 foot, like 43 degree heat. Yeah. I was out there fighting, fighting proper, proper fighters, mate. Yeah. And then I'm running every day, 10k in the morning, 5k in the evening, training for the marathon when I was out there. Yeah. Come back, fit to fiddle, went to a park run, little 5k run, beat that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 first place. <laughs> I'm like, ah, easy, light work. Anyway, then I, then, I, then I ran the marathon. Yeah. Put the work in, trained hard. And yeah, because we did some treatment together, didn't we? Yes, mate. Yeah, yeah, so, we did some treatment together, yeah. Yeah. So um, I do remember that, but I don't yeah. think I had a realisation of what you'd been through, to be honest with you. Yeah. I knew that you had had cancer because you had told me at the time. Yeah. Um, But I don't think I'd really realised, I, d- I don't think I knew you as well as I know you now. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. You don't want to pry into someone's business. Especially yeah. when you're a, a therapist and you're a physio and you're trying to just deal with, you're trying to treat one specific thing, which is like a yeah. niggle in your knee or like tight quads or whatever. Yeah. You don't want to kind of go into it too much just in case it's a bit too like... A bit raw, yeah. Yeah, a bit too raw. Yeah, that's fair enough, mate, yeah. So um, after you ran uh, the London Marathon, what did that feel like, first of all? Yeah, brilliant. Because that's obviously like almost not the end of it, mm. but you created a 
you created a you know a, a goal yeah after this sort of horrendous mm. you know kind of time in your life um and you set yourself that goal and achieved it but how did you feel afterwards do you know what it was amazing the experience was amazing but the feeling i had afterwards it was almost like fuck what now mm. to be fair to mm. be honest i thought like without having a goal i start slipping back into sort of like i didn't then but it felt like i, I was again i was saying to my fitness and it changed my perspective about everything of what i'm putting into my body what I'm not putting into my body, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I was just smashing it. I kept seeing you at the gym, actually. Yeah. Um, so I was just training, 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 well into my Muay Thai yeah. and doing all that sort of training. And then, yeah, it was almost like, well, like what now? Because well, after you finish your treatment and that, you, you almost, you're in this bubble. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the only way I can describe it. You're in a bubble, yeah. um, like a protection bubble. And then all of a sudden, you're like, bang, back out there into the world now. Yeah. And you, that's gone. You think, oh, right, by me. Yeah. Like, what uh, back to reality now yeah, yeah, yeah. and you've still got all of that trauma mm. that that exercise and that training and that motivation and that goal was giving me an escape from mm. and almost sort of hit it and lied to myself for so long like oh, it didn't happen mm. do you know what I mean and I, and I didn't deal with it yeah. and that's what caught up with me later on in life which we've spoken about recently with the alcohol and all that sort of stuff yeah um, looking back now I think like going through all of that and then going back to that, but it's traumatic. And actually, I've met somebody, a girl, a lady. She's I won't mention her name, but she she had the same cancer as me. She yeah. reached out to me. I had a lot of people reach out to me all over, all over the like not the world, but all over the country and stuff like that. From you know, they heard my story through media, uh, TV, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, they reached out to me. People they either have got cancer themselves or their families have, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This yeah. girl did that like, I've met recently, and she actually is she struggled with alcohol struggles with alcohol as well and i met her so i go to every thursday evening now mm. um and she was saying the same thing the trauma of that not dealing with it straight away afterwards yeah. just, uh, and it quite hurt. and she she went through the same process and situation i did yeah with, it, with alcohol just trying to numb that feeling yeah yeah um it makes you feel selfish in a way yeah you think hey i've just got through that and then even though it's years down the line and then you're putting yourself through extra torment through through alcohol but it's all psychological as i've learned now mm. being that four months sober so yeah. it's um yeah it's after that so going back to the question yeah it was i felt it was an amazing feeling to finish it to accomplish it yeah there's so much support there yeah it's amazing mate no you, it's it's an incredible yeah just in that on its own yeah is an incredible journey you know it's a life-changing experience and it yeah. makes you from someone who knows you quite well mm. it makes you very um interesting yeah but inspiring you know and you kind of look at i look at you and i think to myself well that's a that's a that's a real like when i've been talking to, about this interview that we're going to do today obviously yeah i've been sort of leading up to it and thinking about the questions that i wanted to ask you but i've been yeah. saying to other people like this like you don't know this, but yeah, other people, yeah. when I'm talking to them, because your yeah. name is Jack, okay, yeah, I'll call him Jack yeah. the Lad. So I'll say, you know Jack the Lad? And he goes, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to do an interview with him. And he's like, oh, really? So because you've had so many interesting experiences. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I have grown you as a person because I've known you from like when you were really young yeah, yeah, all the way through up. And those experiences, they, you know, they mould your life, don't they? They do, mate, yeah. It's the Yo Bossy Weeze.